I would like to say everything in this video is backed up by not only me, but my other roommate as well, who witnessed everything stated in this video. My son was a witness too, and witnesses of course are a form of evidence. And not only that, I will also back it all up with his personal text messages, DMs, his batshit crazy conspiracy YouTube channel, which is chock full of evidence, and even his Twitter account where he spreads his conspiracies. It seems, according to James William Simpson, the entirety of society is delusional according to him, only he knows the truth about the ways things really are, because he personally unraveled the truth about every important event in history, all through his amazing superhuman code breaking. You can't even state a fact around him. For example, like, if you just said the sky was blue, he'd probably argue with you and tell you that, no, that's not true. In fact, he broke a cipher a long time ago and proved the opposite. It, it's a completely different color, in fact. And you're wrong. The entire world is wrong, in fact. He's the only one right about anything. I want to make something freaking crystal clear. This guy shares his name on everything. On his Facebook, about his batshit crazy conspiracies. He's got 12 of them dedicated to him. A YouTube channel, which shares his name as well and his twitter which is connected to his business where he shares bad shit conspiracies all day and uh i know he's gonna try to say i'm doxing him in this video but i'm not doxing him he's open with his fucking name everywhere like he's already connected it to his crazy conspiracy theory so this isn't doxing so i don't even want to see him attempt that bullshit don't blame me for doing something i didn't do to him something he did to himself long ago Anyways, let's begin our journey. The story started on the 29th, the day he moved in to the apartment. Shortly after he moved in, I unfortunately very quickly learned something was amiss. He was not only super stinky and super smelly, he seemed to be absolutely batshit insane. For a quick example to set the stage a little of the extremes of his delusions. His last name is Simpson, right? Well, he literally thinks the show The Simpsons by Matt Groening is literally based on his life, simply because the show and him share the same last name. He thinks the show's creator, Matt, literally tracks him every day and makes episodes about his fucking life. Okay. The second day he moved in, no fucking shit, he talked my ear off for 12 fucking hours, telling me absolutely absurd and impossible conspiracies, all with the moral of the story being that he's some sort of prophet and literal center of the universe. For example, he thinks we pulled out of Iraq because he wrote a congressman over some BS code he think he broke. He really believes we left the war because of him. Narcissistic much? That narcissism will be a big time reoccurring theme throughout this entire video. Again, everything centers around him. He, he is the fucking star of the show, bro. The truth of the matter is, I'm pretty easy to get along with for the most part. Even if he was madly delusional, I probably would have let him stay still. As long as he kept to himself and simply paid rent, I could just nod and agree with his bullshit and just go into my room and ignore him. But he wasn't just simply delusional. He is a fragile person. He is a very fragile ego who deep down knows he might be wrong about this stuff. So if you throw any logic at his insanity, he potentially gets very hostile. He's been consistently vengeful on people since he moved in. He has conspiracies about everything in his life. Like, he thinks the cashier at Circle K is talking in secret fucking code. He literally thinks just because the light bulb was going out in the living room that the people upstairs' apartment were using their remote to purposely turn off his living room light just to fuck with them. That conspiracy later got expanded upon when he would stalk them every day he went outside to smoke cigarettes. Eventually, he thought they were selling fucking fentanyl. I saw the guy upstairs literally give fentanyl to a drug-addicted bum, he delusionally said. I just wondered how, since they're all the way upstairs, how did he see anything at all? Even if he could somehow see anything, how did he know it was a bum? He could have easily been the neighbor's cousin or brother or something. 
Or how does he know it was fentanyl? It could have been just money he owed. It could have been aspirin. It could have been a mint. He literally thinks they're all high upstairs and personally fucking with them and harassing them by turning out the living room light all day. Why would someone dedicate time to that? I just don't get it. Just to fuck with them. But the most concerning thing was that like his conspiracies and delusions weren't confined just to the internet or, or politics. They, they were next door. They were in the apartment complex. They were all around him. And that was dangerous. And worst of all, these delusions made him think people were a threat. And he could potentially want to defend himself from such threats. That's the problem. For example, I noticed he was very potentially dangerous when he had told me the last people he rented from owned an adoption agency. He was totally fine with this, at least at the time. But as soon as... As soon as they took his security deposit, you know, stole it from him, didn't return it because they wanted to keep it, suddenly they aren't any ordinary d adoption agency anymore, but, a, you know, sex trafficking adoption agency, you know, of children. And he told me and my roommate that he wanted to spray paint in yellow paint uh, their vehicles and buildings with child traffickers. I know by this time, it was only a matter of time, he would target me in one of his wacko conspiracies too, and try to ruin my fucking life. And it was totally fucking true, and guess what? I was right. He did attempt this in the future. Here is me just days after he just moved in, uh, venting to Shane Killian that what I'm going through and that I think my roommate is insane. Here is an image of me and Jim Jesus talking in DMs, concerned about whether or not this guy's going to kill me when I sleep. Here is me asking my friends and family to back up my evidence against James in case he does something to me, like kill me. Yeah, I got that fucking sketchy, bro. We got that goddamn scary. Another huge red flag to me and my personal favorite conspiracy theory of his was the goddamn day. He thought it would be a brilliant idea to barge in my room at 3 a.m., just mere hours before I got to wake up for work, to tell me he discovered that a 20-year-old Xbox game called The Suffering is somehow fucking tracking him, and his life and the developers clearly left codes in the game referencing the street James once lived on, including his old roommate, his last name. It's all bull. Let me break it down for you. The first line was, is gnome is simp. Means absolutely nothing, right? I mean, it's obvious. It, it's gibberish. It's random fucking letters. Well, not to James. To James, it meant this. His name is Simpson. Oh my God, the 20-year-old game is tracking me, bro. I gotta go tell Dapperton. He thought. The next line was literally, and I shit you not, he said he is FAMU. That's what the secret code said. He is FAMU. Means nothing, right? It's just random letters. But what he got from it was he is famous. So putting it together, what does it mean? His name is Simpson. He is famous. Again, the whole world cares about him and is making references to him even 20 years ago. Again, the whole goddamn world revolves around James Simpson. And he's not crazy. You're the crazy one for not believing this. He's literally deriving any meaning he wants from letter soup. He also thought the legendary band, you know, you probably heard of it. It's called Grateful Dead, referenced his cousin's brain damage on an album cover as a tribute to his influence in music. James Simpson believed him and his cousin were the greatest influence on music back in the day in the 90s, even more than MTV, he said. The Grateful Dead tributed the album cover to him by showing a very damaged and not very intelligent looking fella on the album cover. That's his fucking cousin, apparently. And James claims that that's due to his cousin's brain damage, which he received in a very unfortunate auto accident. His cousin apparently unfortunately suffered head trauma and needed a steel plate inserted into his head after his brain was damaged and his skull was damaged. Like the fragments of the skull got stuck in his brain and they had to pull it out. Uh, it just, it's just a, tra it's a travesty. And, and because his cousin didn't believe James' conspiracies, he thinks his cousin is now brain damaged permanently to the point where he's retarded, he said. 
honestly, his cousin sounds like he's the smartest man to ever confront James Simpson. Like, honestly, like this guy sounds based and he makes fun of him. And, and, and I guess like this dude takes care of him and like protects him. And he's going to talk that kind of garbage to him. It's just disgraceful. I don't think this man is dumb at all. I think his cousin is fucking awesome. And James is just an asshole, dude. Just because somebody doesn't believe his conspiracies, he thinks he's brain damaged. He literally said that. He doesn't believe me, bro. So, like, he, he's totally brain damaged. Like, ever since the accident, like, nothing I say he believes. Well, it's because you, you, you spit garbage. Nothing in what you say makes sense. It, it's, it's all delusional garbage. Cousin sounds like a genius, and you sound like the fucking brain damaged one. Anyways, bravo to his based ass cousin. You know how I told you the suffering game delusion was pretty good that you know that a twenty year old came could be tracking him. That's hilarious and and, and amusing and all, but the, it's nothing compared to this one. This one might be your favorite. My personal favorite's the like about the Xbox game because it was twenty years old and just ridiculous. But this is ridiculous too. Probably even more so. He literally thinks he personally unlock the codes that bernie sanders you know the politician is a fucking serial killer need it to be nuttier he also thinks he killed not only martin luther king but john f fucking kennedy here is the code he broke that confirms bernie sanders is the zodiac killer he even did a video on it here's the code from the video the shit to the left is the code right it's the it's, it's just random letter soup it's just random code. And, that, and on the right is the secret messages he unlocked. One of them says, Doctor, if my pussy is ready for a cock, could you fuck it yourself? And, he, and what he got from that is, Oh my God, Bernie Sanders is the Zodiac Killer! And he also killed Martin Luther King and JFK. And if you want to see his video, it's linked in the description. All of his crazy ass links will be linked in the description, by the way. Check that shit out. It should be a lot of fun. So here's the thing. Uh, James tried to report uh, Bernie Sanders being the Zodiac Killer to the police, to the California police. And they uh, thought it was ridiculous. And they gave him like a thumbs up, you know, as like just as a way to acknowledge him. But to him, read this. This is confirmation that he's correct about Bernie being the Zodiac Killer. That's confirmation in his eyes. So every time me and my roommate try to explain basic truth to James Simpson, he always says, well, I'm an award winner. And we were like, what the fuck is he talking about? I asked him about it. Look at this. And he's not an award winner. Basically, the military won a shorty award for a military game they made. And James Simpson made a conspiracy about it. And he bugged them on their page. And so they linked him as a reference to this page. Now, in his mind, that means he won the Shorty Award. He didn't win the fucking Shorty Award. The goddamn government won it with their military game. How does that mean that he won an award just because he's a fucking reference to the links? Look, this is where he's linked. Okay, his bullshit Facebook page is linked. It's madness. It does not mean he's right about these conspiracies. But to him, it does. It means he's right. Just like what the fucking police thumbs up his Zodiac killer fucking shit that's obviously crazy. It meant that he's right about it. And just because they reference his fucking page, and this confirms in his head that he's right about everything. Right? And that you're wrong about everything. He's an award winner, which means he's an expert on literally everything. And you're wrong about everything. Another thing, he stayed three fucking weeks. Dude never put any soap or shampoo in the shower. What does that mean? Yes, he never took a shower. Not even fucking once. In the near month he stayed. He even told me he hadn't washed his hair in months. And that he doesn't wear deodorant even when he goes bike riding, hiking, or mountain climbing. Because he fears the chemicals will just clog him up. He not only reeked of super bad B.O. all the time. He always smelled like wet fucking feces. Basically, he smelled like a hot fucking garbage. He, he even told me personally, he rarely showers. And if he gets a bit stinky, I'm supposed to tell him to wash his ass. 
Like, he's not old enough to know to do that shit himself. I wanted to tell him to do so immediately, like day three, but I didn't want to be rude. But he never took a shower. Probably still has it to this very day. Very unfortunately, and, uh, and I really truly mean this, it's sad. It's like the saddest story of this entire tale. The dude has cancer. I honestly don't know if it's true. A lot of what he has said turned out to be untrue. Manipulation over time. Maybe the social security he collects is from a mental Ill illness and has nothing to do with cancer. I really don't know. But I'm not going to say that for sure. I'm just going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say he does have cancer, in fact. And that really fucking sucks. And I really do feel for him on that. But in the end, that doesn't give him a license to be a dick. Anyways, let's talk about what he does for a living. So, the career he's been pursuing for the last 13, 14 years is a bicycle company. And that's his job and his entire purpose for the last 14 years. I mean, honestly, I don't know if he's been on Social Security the whole time like he is today. But So that means he never tried getting a job and funding the company himself. His job is literally, at least this is what it was when he was living with me, staying home all day collecting government cheese, and uh, being on Twitter, constantly trying to fund his company by begging celebrities, asking them, no, oh, begging for a massive, unbelievable donation. And he calls that a job. But it's not like he's asking for a lot. Okay, just hear me out, man. He's only asking for $12 million. I shit you not, that's how much he's asking every day for the last... 14 years, been trying to get that 12 mil, and that's his job. Probably will get that chump change by tomorrow. <laughs> Not. He literally stayed at home all day when he was here, and the, the very, like, three weeks he was here, until 7 a.m. almost every night, arguing with people on Twitter that Bernie is the Zodiac Killer, and he called that shit working. Well, I don't think it is. So you know, he apparently needs only 12 million to get his bicycle company off the ground. How much does each of his bicycles cost, you may wonder? It's, it's not that much. It's only 13000 a piece. I find this to be extremely, I mean, well, maybe not extremely, just a little bit, unrealistic. I said, why would someone buy this motorized bicycle when you could buy an actual motorcycle or a fucking car for the same cost? In some cases, less which has air conditioning and has even more storage space than his fucking bicycles do. And that's the point of them. They're, they're delivery devices for groceries. His delusions don't stop there, though. He said every Walmart and Fry's on the fucking planet, which is just unbelievable amount of stores, will buy 10 of them. Will buy 10 bikes immediately. It's going to happen tomorrow, in fact. And they will hire extra employees. All these stores will. Like, they could afford that to deliver these groceries on these ultra expensive, unrealistic, unproven bicycles. The dude needs like a reality check. Somebody needs to walk up to him and be like, and slap him and be like, dude, that's never gonna happen. You're never gonna get 12 million overnight as a donation. Uh, your bike company is not gonna happen even if you got the 12 million because it's too expensive per bike. You could get a fucking moped for $800, one thirteenth the cost, less than one thirteenth the cost of what you're asking, and it does the same exact fucking thing. So, like, there's no fucking winning. Like, there's no way he's ever going to win. It's, his whole idea is delusional. He really needs to stop pursuing this super delusional dream that he's been chasing for 14 years. And just get a damn job! And what's hilarious, dude, is that I told him he should go on Shark Tank to get that loan he wants, because that's honestly the only way he'll ever get a loan, and he would have to make a convincing case and leave his crazy conspiracies out of it. He's like, oh, I can't do that because, well, the show asked for 3% before you even walk through the door. So this, dude, that's not even a lot. Like, he doesn't want to share any, he expects somebody to give him $12 million for free and not ask for any money in return as, like, ownership of the company like he expects someone just to throw money at him for free i, I don't know he he needs to get a fucking job dude and stop like living this fantasy so the other day he got a, a flat on his bike and i was like dude i'll take you to the bike shop no big deal 
He delusionally told the bike shop he was the biggest bike company on the planet, even though he hasn't sold a single bike ever. Fucking ever, dude. In his delusions, you know, he's a prestigious business owner. And he told me multiple times when he was living here that me working 35 hours just isn't enough. I need to get a better job and obviously be a little bit more like him. You know, the audacity of this fucking guy, dude. Anyways, uh, me and him get in a political argument. You know, I'm a libertarian. I simply try to correct him on something super fucking basic and it's obviously common sense, which he could not for the life of him comprehend. One was the fact he thinks capitalism, not government, but capitalism is what creates taxes. He thinks, two, he thinks capitalism creates laws. Three, he thinks the Federal Reserve printing tens of trillions of dollars in the last couple of years did not cause inflation at all. Nor does he understand how inflation even works, or really anything fucking works, but he'll tell you for 12 hours a day how society really works and and everyone is wrong by him and anyways i simply corrected him on these things his response he then laughably called me me delusional and was told i live in and i was told by him that i live in a false reality i laughed for like you know like a solid like 10 seconds you know i couldn't help it but like basically told them fucking insane people Shouldn't be throwing the word delusion around like that. I just don't understand how he he can't even fathom that maybe, just maybe, that me and everyone around him don't fall for his shit. Don't believe his craziness. Like, how does he not know this? How does he not know everybody around him thinks he's crazy? You know, I tried to break it to him easily. I was like, are you on meds? I mean... Have you ever been diagnosed as a paranoid schizophrenic? He did not like that shit because it put his craziness in perspective to him for the first time ever. And so he just got in my face and like started screaming at me. He was like, you're getting belligerent. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? I just asked you a question. Then funny enough, I eventually tell him something he really didn't want to hear. And okay, let me preference this by saying that a little bit ago, like a few years ago, he bought gold mines over, all over some delusional codes he thought he broke. And they lead to treasure in Arizona in these mountains. And I guess they're fucking gold mines now. And not just that, they're the richest gold mines in the world. Why? Because he owns them. And that makes him the richest. Even though he's never found gold there. And he's been mining there for years. But hey, that shouldn't surprise you because he's also... The biggest bike company in the world, even though he's never sold a bike. Yeah, let that sink in. Anyways, I told him, I don't think your little mountains have any gold, bro. At this moment, I literally thought he was going to fucking cry. He gets like a goddamn inch away from my face. And he's like, I got deeds. It's like, that doesn't prove they have gold. He's like, he gets even closer to my face. He gets like half an inch away from my face. And he's like, what does it matter if I have gold or not? Are you jealous? It's like, what the, what? What are you talking about? Dude, the reason this matters is because it proves that you're insane. That, 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 that you go all in on these fantasies. Like, you're mining fucking gold in, in mountains that have no fucking gold in hopes to getting it rich easily because you don't want to work. Like, just get a job, bro. Just fucking get a job and, and stop with these fantasies and, and these delusions. It's time to grow up. You're almost 50. He's like, well, you're the real bad guy because you're involved in a rental scam. I'm like, what? How am I involved in a rental scam? I, okay, I'm kicking. I'm going to kick you out, bro, but I'm going to prorate the apartment and refund the days you weren't here. How is that a scam? He's like, well, because... You paid, you had two ads. One was $50 less than the other. I'm like, dude, I was adjusting the price for competition because like the, the, the fucking people that were on Craigslist were cheaper than me. So I had to adjust the price accordingly, you know, to be competitive. That doesn't mean I'm a scam artist. It means the opposite. It's like, I'm going to report you to your leasing office for putting people 
uh, in your apartment without putting them on the lease. It's like, you know damn well I was going to get you on the fucking lease. The only reason I changed my mind is because I found out you were crazy and a threat to not only me and my roommate, but my son. You, you're a danger to everyone. Like, my family and friends are telling me to get you the fuck out. And that's why I didn't put you on the lease. It's not because I'm a scam artist. He's like, well, you know what? And he literally said this. I'm going to report you to the police for being a terrorist and being on the FBI watch list. I was like, just completely baffled how we came to this ridiculous conclusion. But this is how we came to it. Look at this image. All it says is that like uh, extremist groups throw up these flags sometimes. And it says in bold letters right there in the fucking goddamn image. And I, and I showed it to him and he just completely ignored it. The use or sharing of these symbols alone should not independently be considered evidence of NVE presence or affiliation or serve as an indicator of illegal activity. As many individuals use these symbols for their original historic meaning or other nonviolent purposes. So obviously, these aren't symbols of hate. And it doesn't mean I'm on the FBI watch list. This is a false police report he was threatening me with. The, the dude should be locked up. And, and I told him this, and he's like, and he just completely ignored it because he was weaponizing his fucking stupidity and his delusions against me. And uh, he just continued with his bullshit, and he didn't care that he was wrong. He was going to continue with his lie and falsely report me to the police, and which is a false police report, which is illegal. Don't act too shocked. This isn't the first time he tried to uh, target harassment and slander or defame or destroy property or destroy the life of somebody you know this month this is the fourth so the first one was obviously the last renters he had that stole a security deposit which obviously meant they were child sex traffickers according to him and he slandered them and wanted to uh vandalize their property their cars their their buildings as with those words the other guy was simply a guy on twitter you know just expressing his opinion saying that you know, people collecting government cheese, you shouldn't, you know? But uh, to him, you know, he said that was genocide. And, well, you know, uh, we need to dox this person. He said, like, like, dude, I'm not going to help you dox him. And he said, I'm going to dox him. And somebody needs to beat his ass and throw him in jail. And I'm like, dude, Jesus Christ. The third guy was a scam artist on Twitter promising him $12 million. And he was stupid enough to fall for it. And I told him not to. And anyways, uh, I proved to him, long story short, I proved to him that this guy is a fucking scam artist. In fact, he asked for James's social security number and his ID, which he was trying to steal his uh, identity. And he was like, let's dox him. Here's proof of that. This guy was posing as a lottery winner online, by the way. And uh, he apparently thought that would be easy money. You know, well, easier than working, which he refuses to do. Four people he wanted to enact revenge on over delusions and just plain old crossing him. This guy is a danger to society. He, that, that, this is precisely why I'm making the video. I'm not trying to pick on the mentally ill. I'm trying to fucking cover my ass in case this guy kills me. So people know my story and know he's a danger. So anyways, I did you guys kind of a huge favor and I listed his YouTube channel. Like, the vast, vast majority of them are all conspiracy theories with insane, uh, like, delusional code-breaking that it just doesn't make any goddamn sense that lead to ridiculous conclusions. They're a lot of fun. I highly recommend it. Uh, his Twitter is... He talks on it all day about crazy conspiracies. Enjoy them. Just, just view his replies and his, uh, his posts and just enjoy that shit because they're crazy. And do check out his Facebook pages that I linked. There's like 12 of them. And they all have different conspiracies. And they're insane and they're fun. And the only thing I could think to say to you, James, to end this video, is the thing I should have told you the third day you moved in. Wash your butt.